I was born and raised in Seoul, Korea. You know, in Korea at that time, you want to do soccer, you want to play baseball, or you want to do martial arts. So that's really how I got into it, and, and I just loved it. Putting on my uniform, putting on my white belt, or putting on my, you know, my belt, going to class, learning the basics of, you know, of self-defense. I said to myself at a very early time, I'm going to dedicate my life to going martial arts. So I wrote this mission statement when I was 16 years old. And I said, this is gonna be it, richer or poor, you know, whatever it is, I'm gonna teach martial arts, I'm gonna compete in martial arts, I'm gonna grow martial arts, and this is gonna be my life. And that's what I've been spending the last 40 years doing. Scott is known today as, you know, an MMA promoter but really Scott is a martial artist at heart, first and foremost. When we moved to San Jose, uh, I was about, I wanna say I was about 11 years old. Uh, I said, I wanna go, to, go back to, to martial arts. And I kept bugging my mom, and so she eventually found uh, the school, which is Choice Taekwondo. And Ernie Ray Sr. was the uh, instructor in the school. You know, I remember the first day he came in. He came in actually with his mom, because she's the one that had to sign up. And so I talked to him, and he was a very humble person. He wasn't your normal martial artist. He's very gifted, you know, he's very driven. Whatever it is that he wanted to do, he would always accomplish. He did all the flying, jumping, spinning kicks, you know, and he was one of my first black belts and at 16 years old. Our first workout was at 5.30 in the morning, right? So he would pick us up in the van, and he would take us to the school, like the, and we would all practice there. Yeah, I remember a lot, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears right here at 5.30 in the morning. Then i go home, come back, you know, a shower, go home, shower, come back, and then go to class. And then after we finished class, we went back to the choir school. I was there probably by 4.30, 5 o'clock. Stayed till 7.30, class was over. And uh, that was like my day. You know, the things that uh, I learned at that school has, you know, affected my belief system and everything that I've done and everything that I continue to do. And like Ernie Senior always said to me, he said, don't be uh, a black belt, you know, in the school, be a black belt in life. Scott, when he was young, his main hero was Bruce Lee. My fascination with him is from a martial arts standpoint. Bruce saw the future. He understood that there's not gonna be one style that fits all. That you have to go and you have to become an eclectic martial arts style and create your own system. And if you look at what's happening today, that's exactly what it is now. I feel really fortunate that I walked into a school close to my house that turned out to be a great martial arts academy and has taught me, you know, many lessons in life. We were at a martial arts event at the Oakland Coliseum and there were 17,000 attendants, possibly, you know, as far as seating goes. And there was at that time 1,000 people. And he just told me, hey, I'm going to be able to fill one of these things, our quantum. We're going to end up doing it one of these days. In 2005, the California State Athletic Commission, which I've had a license at that time for like 20 years, kept saying to us, we're going we're gonna to legalize MMA in California. I get a call from Armando Garcia, and he says, okay, we're going to give you the first license, but you have to do the fight in 90 days, right? So I'm like, oh boy, I got a lot of work to do here. I call Frank Shamrock, I go, Frank, meet me at the uh, Starbucks. I go, you ready to fight? We only have 90 days, you know? He said, I I'm ready, I'm in. So he wanted to be part of history too, so he said, let's do it. And I had to run to Pleasanton, go sign Caesar Gracie. So it happened like that, bang, bang. He sent out somewhere to get a cage, and the cage showed up, and, and the cage was in like all these pieces, and he's like, hey, Bob, can you help me put this thing together? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how this thing goes together. Where's the missing parts? What are we gonna do? Fortunately, I've got a little bit of a construction background, so it came in handy. And right around one o'clock, I remember us probably right down here with a gentleman by the name of uh, Steve Kersner from the building, and he says, oh, you're sold out. And I said, well, what do you mean sold out? Like sold out like in, your, in our sections? Can we open up more? He said, no, every ticket in this house is like gone. So we, we still hold the attendance record for the United States for MMA. And Frank fought Caesar. It wasn't a great fight. He knocked him out. It was like you know, a minute and a half. But that was the birth of Strike Force. I was one of the first fighters he signed with Strike Force. My relationship with Scott goes beyond just him being a promoter. You know, um, we're friends. He is that way with several other fighters that I know, you know, I mean, anywhere from Frank Shamrock to Kung Lee to, you know, Gilbert to those guys. At the end of the day, I am a fan. And that's how I interact with, with the athlete is that, hey, you're the star of the show. You're the guy that's going to make it all happen. So 
And I think the fighters appreciate that. You can tell he's for the fighters. You know, so many presidents aren't for the fighters. You know, you got to respect and, uh, and and you can give as much love as you can to the men that uh, you know make the organization what it is. And uh, and that's what Scott does. He doesn't seem like a boss. He seems like a friend. And it's great to have someone who you trust. There is no ulterior motives. He's going to tell you what you can do, what he can't do. You know, he sort of took me and sort of groomed me and sort of grew me a little bit to be the MMA fighter. And to see him go to Bellator, I was so excited. To be in the hands of somebody that's gonna take care of you, that's gonna help you to grow to become a great fighter. Not just be a great ticket, or be a great money maker for, but a great fighter. To me, I want to think outside the box. I want to put some fun fights on. I want to, I said, I want to bring, I want to bring the fringe fans back. I would love to go as a fan. I would love to go to an event and see MMA and see kickboxing. So when I had the opportunity to put this event together, I said, man, we got to do a throwback. Our next big tentpole event is going to be September 19th at the SAP Center in San Jose, California. I'm not coming back to San Jose to just throw an average fight. We're going to have a four-man tournament with King Mo, with Linton Vassell, you know, with Phil Davis, with Emmanuel Newton. That alone could have been the main event. And throw Tito and Leo on top of that, and you had glory kickboxing. And to bring all that and bring it back home to San Jose, that's really what this is about for me. This is real personal. This is kind of like a homecoming party for Scott. You know, he's entwined in the martial art community here and with all the gyms and all the martial artists. It's a big deal for me because I live in San Jose. My gym's in San Jose, the majority of my fighters. To have a home base and to have another outlet where we can uh, you know, showcase our fighters is fantastic. It means a lot. I mean, this is where you know, I built Strike Force, but it's been four and a half years since I did an event there. To walk into that arena for the first time, I know it's gonna be really, really emotional for me because you know, this is where it all started, just like coming home. So when you stop and think about just this event, this dynamite event that's happening, he's honoring martial arts legends from the past. Scott, deep in his heart, believes that martial arts is for life. And you have to train it, you have to teach it, and you have to live it until your last breath.